I think this biomedical security state apparatus that has been put in place during the pandemic will remain in place and will be redeployed for other purposes. And a good example to wrap your head around this is the idea of the vaccine passport. If you were to take people in 2018 and 2019 and say, you need to download this app on the phone, then you need to go out and, and take this novel medical intervention that was just basically recently invented, recently tested, recently rolled out. Um, and then you've got to demonstrate, you gotta, you gotta show me your QR code, verifying that you've done what you were told to do in order to get on a plane, get on a train, eat at a restaurant, gather in a public space for a public event. I think most, most Americans of all political persuasions would have said, no way, right? This is, this is an unacceptable intrusion on my privacy, on my bodily autonomy, on my freedom of movement and my freedom of association. In the last two years, under the, during the state of emergency and in a climate of, of fear, in a climate of having many of my ordinary rights taken from me, freedom of movement during the lockdowns, and then with the promise, you know, there's sort of carrots and sticks of you can't go to work, you've got to work from home, uh, maybe your small business is going to be shut down because you can't keep it afloat during the lockdowns. But if you do this thing, we're going to let you get back to normal or we're going to let you keep your job or whatever. Well, a, lo a lot of Americans went, went ahead and did that. What I'm trying to help people understand is, OK, you may not have minded you know, verifying that you had been vaccinated in order to travel, but this has now become normalized. And what if the next thing that's demanded of you by the governing authorities, or the public health authorities, is something that you're not so inclined to do or that you're ambivalent about or that you want to, you want to wait a year before you, you know, go ahead and take that step or you want to do a little more research or what, whatever, um, or you believe you have a medical contraindication for, how are you going to feel about this passport system then? The, this vaccine passport system gives unprecedented, an unprecedented level of surveillance, monitoring, and control to many different institutions, not just the government. Many, many people are given access to otherwise private and protected health information. You're showing to a perfect stranger uh, verification of a particular medical decision that, um, that you've made, perhaps under coercion or under duress, or so that you could go and visit your your grandparents who were dying or whatever, um, that's going to be used for other purposes, right? There is going to be another public health crisis. Um, there are social issues already in play that over the last year have been redefined as public health issues. Climate change would be one obvious example of something that five, 10 years ago was framed as an environmental issue, and it's been now reframed as a public health issue. I think this same uh, infrastructure is probably going to be deployed to, again, try to control movements of, of the population. Just a week or two ago, uh, there were governing authorities in England that were advising people to, I think it was work from home three days a week to deal with the oil and gas crisis created by the, the political situation with Russia and Ukraine. Many people have talked about how clean the air was during lockdowns and are, have proposed rolling lockdowns or periodic lockdowns as a way to try to deal with climate change. Again, whether you think those things are a good idea or not a good idea, the important thing is to recognize that this welding of public health with digital technologies of surveillance and control and the police powers of the state allow for intrusions on our privacy, on our bodily autonomy that are unprecedented in history. I mean, the, the most controlling totalitarian regimes of the past could have only dreamed of having these tools at their disposal. We live in an era of censorship and disinformation, and it can be really hard to know what's true and what's false in this information climate. To get honest information and insights you can trust, Join us on Epoch TV.
you can sign up for your 14-day free trial at ept.ms slash free trial yan. That's ept.ms slash free trial J-A-N. Well, you know, we're in California and, uh, and, you know, we were discussing offline a whole suite of new legislation that kind of speaks to exactly the kinds of things you're talking about, like legislation that's actually being proposed. And I still have no idea if this is something that can be passed, but let's just say there isn't a strong opposition in California. Right. So, yeah, if you want to see sort of which way the winds are blowing um, or you want to see which direction the, the sheep are moving, the, the bellwether uh, state is probably California for some of these novel measures. And what I've described as the biomedical security state, if you look at these 10 bills that have been proposed in the California state legislature, it's a, it's a pretty clear sketch of what the next phase or the next step in this process will look like. So that includes bills that will, for example, lower the age of consent for vaccines to 12 years old so that parents uh, are not consenting on behalf of their children for this medical intervention. They're not even perhaps notified that their child was vaccinated. Um, intrusions into medical privacy. So there's one bill that will allow uh, the, uh, gover the government and the, the medical board, which is appointed by the government, to basically search uh, physicians' offices and physicians' records and to access patients' medical records without the patient's own consent. There are bills that involve uh, a, an attempt to control the free speech of physicians and to muzzle any physicians who challenge the government's public health narrative or the government's public health recommendations. They will be labeled as, as giving misinformation and subjected to discipline by the medical board, which is a very serious thing for a physician. That's even more serious than you know, losing your job. If I lose my job at a particular hospital, I can go and get a job at another hospital or start a private practice. But if I lose my medical license, that means I can't practice medicine at all. It would be like being disbarred. Mm -hmm.